Uh, welcome back to uh, Peacemaker by Adnan Habul. Through this channel, I aim to be a bridge between the intricacies of international relations and the everyday lives of uh, people like you and me. It's not just about uh, understanding the problems, it's about finding solutions, uh, fostering dialogue and contributing to a safer, more harmonious world. Whether you are a student curious about world affairs or a seasoned professional seeking informed perspectives, you are in the right place. Together we can explore uh, the potential for positive change, learn from the past and envision a future where global security isn't just a concept, but a, a real TV actively shape. Uh, in the past episodes, I have been talking about the war in Ukraine from various angles, but today I will make a case study uh, by focusing on the uh, economy and financial implications of this conflict. If you stay with me long enough in this video, you will understand why this issue is important for everyone including you, my dear friend, who doesn't care about politics. This is not just a philosophical debate, but something that points finger to a tangible danger for the European Union and the rest of the world. I have many friends and family members who live in Germany, and they all agree that Germany is no longer what it used to be. The living conditions are still bearable, depending on uh, the region in which they live, but uh, the trend is in severe decline. In this video, I will explain why all this happens and answer uh, the key questions you may raise. I will briefly uh, introduce you to the problems such as uh, key indicators of recession in Germany, and also I will speak about uh, neo-Nazism on the rise, xenophobia, Islamophobia, uh, the rise of uh, AFD. So if you click the subscribe button, we can start with the first issue. The key indicators of recession. Energy crisis and limited options for overcoming it. Uh, the energy crisis uh, started uh, uh, immediately uh, when uh, Nord Stream uh, 1 and 2 have been blown up uh, by still unknown culprits. Uh, but uh, I would... Uh, blame actually uh, German leadership, former councillor Angela Merkel, and even before her, uh, uh, Gerhard Schroeder, who actually somehow uh, tied too much uh, German economy with uh, uh, cheap Russian gas. And, uh, before the conflict uh, in Ukraine, before 2014, that uh, sounded as a very good idea uh, why they would uh, pay for, uh, you know, uh, too expensive uh, energy when they can uh, get it uh, for peanuts from uh, Russia. But nevertheless, uh, since uh, uh, February uh, 2022, German economy started suffering uh, uh, big time. So uh, the largest impact of uh, expensive energy uh, reflects on housing construction, for instance, chemical industry, one of the uh, key pillars of uh, uh, German economy, but also 
there is another issue. Uh, as I could uh, notice, uh, there is a severe decline in innovation in the German industrial branch uh, and lagging behind the USA and China in the produ uh, production of electric vehicles. We know that German, uh, another uh, main pillar of industry was uh, car industry. And now uh, many countries are uh, investing uh, big time uh, in uh, production of uh, more efficient electric vehicles. But uh, everything depends of uh, 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 how much uh, lithium uh, certain country has. And that actually triggers uh, geopolitical uh, gains and fights uh, about Africa. And, you know, everything is interlinked. Uh, and also uh, what uh, uh, stress uh, German economy is a brain drain uh, caused by reduced incomes and increased ta taxation. So, uh, all together, uh, you know, uh, it uh, reduced uh, uh, purchasing power of every Germans, and that forces them to reduce spending, which caused a chain uh, reaction in thousands of companies and the loss of millions of, uh, anyway, low-paid jobs. Because uh, since uh, 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 2020, uh, not so many uh, uh, industries uh, increased uh, salaries. Uh, they are mo mostly frozen. Okay, in, in certain branches, uh, uh, the situation is still uh, okay, like uh, 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 healthcare uh, workers, uh, IT uh, experts, uh, but uh, majority of people are still uh, affected. Now, uh, somebody would wonder how Germany came to this point. Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, the impact of Russia-Ukrainian war and poor management in the past few decades in Germany. Uh, also, uh, uh, this uh, coalition, ruling coalition, uh, is heavily affected uh, by uh, ideas and uh, program of uh, Green Party. I have nothing against any political party, well, it's uh, it's the uh, legitimate goal to fight against uh, global warming and the uh, reduction of uh, uh, CO2 emission. But uh, in my humble opinion, uh, and according to all uh, serious uh, researches, Global warmings uh, are proven even in the Stone Age, where no uh, industry existed, and CO2 emission had uh, uh, not posed any problem. There is a limited space for optimism that things will be better as soon as the war in Ukrainian, uh, in Ukraine is over. Do you remember a popular slogan since 2020 that the world will never be the same? Well, it simply won't, because the main industrial and economic engine of the European Union, Germany, is catching a cold. History teaches us uh, and warns us uh, that this has always been a bad sign for the world's future. Now we come to the part uh, about the 
real danger that uh, the EU already faces. And that's rise of uh, ultra-nationalism in many countries as a result of economic crisis. This is nothing new. Populist movements usually gain significant support from desperate people in such circumstances. Uh, we are witnessing not only in Germany, but in uh, Hungary, Poland, Netherlands, uh, uh, that uh, neo-Nazism is on the rise. Xenophobia, uh, Islamophobia, which is a form of anti-Semitism. I, I described uh, this in my previous articles, which you can find on LinkedIn. Uh, and I think I mentioned in several podcasts with, uh, with my guests. So uh, let's go back to Angela Merkel when, uh, when she said uh, there is no alternative for Deutschland, for Germany, uh, in uh, tidying up uh, uh, its economy to uh, Russian gas. Well, there is a group of uh, people who said there is alternative uh, for uh, Germany. And that's uh, uh, called, uh, pardon my uh, German, uh, alternative für Deutschland. Mm, that's uh, alternative for Germany. As a response to Merkel's statement. The AFD uh, believes uh, uh, I will just uh, summarize uh, the program. Basically, they believe uh, that uh, kicking out all foreigners would help the German economy. But this, this is only a dangerous uh, populist delusion. The German workforce is uh, too old. And this country cannot function without foreigners. That program would be only a short, uh, just a shot in their own knee. I don't know, what do you think about that? You can leave your comments below and we can discuss. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, all indicators are saying that uh, populism usually uh, gives a hope, not a solution. I will take an uh, example of uh, Meloni uh, in Italy. She won on, on the uh, waves of uh, populism, like uh, she is going to put uh, Italian uh, economy in order. But uh, just uh, research how uh, it Italian economy is doing now. Meloni uh, definitely faced a pl plethora of problems, which we will see how she is going to uh, solve. But her uh, chair is not so uh, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, so in this uh, brief uh, uh, case study, by pointing out on uh, on uh, uh, German economy uh, and German economic crisis as the engine of the uh, European Union, uh, I just wanted to uh, show you a link between what I was uh, saying in in general about uh, conflicts and how. Uh, that uh, really impact on our daily lives. So, situation in uh, many other countries, it's even worse. So, let's hope uh, uh, the German uh, 
economy would uh, revive and find some way, but uh, I doubt uh, it will happen very soon. So this is all for today. Uh, you have best regards from Adnan and uh, stay well, stay safe. I love you all and subscribe, share, like, comment. Bye.